As the nation's former top intelligence official, it's a safe guess James Clapper knows the answers to questions many of us can hardly imagine. This morning, he's talking with our David Martin. I am proud to announce my choice for the next director of national intelligence, James Clapper. Before James Clapper signed on to become Barack Obama's Director of National Intelligence, he wrote the President a letter with these famous last words. I've always sought to be below the radar. I do not like publicity. So here you are. Yeah, here I am. Writing a memoir. Right. What happened? I needed to uh, defend the intelligence community and, and the great men and women in it, given some of the assaults that Kennedy was getting from the president-elect and then the president. The memoir he has written is called Facts and Fears, Hard Truths from a Life in Intelligence, which began the moment he came into this world as the son of an Army Signals Intelligence officer, assigned to eavesdropping posts around the world. So you're a natural-born spy. I apparently inherited the gene. So it might surprise you to hear Clapper's reaction when in 2010 he was recruited to become the country's top intelligence officer, the director of national intelligence. I said no. At the time I was uh, pushing 70 years old, and now I'm, I'm dragging it. But the president insisted, and Clapper found himself with his family in the Oval Office. My granddaughter is about 13 or 14, and he just said, I want to thank your grandfather for taking on the second most thankless job in this town. And boy, was he right. <laughs> In his letter, Clapper had told Obama he was a truth-to-power guy. What's the most uh, inconvenient truth you had to tell President Obama? I drew the short straw to uh, brief him about uh, Edward Snowden, which was not pleasant. And the President, uh, understandably and appropriately, lost his temper. Edward Snowden, the IT administrator with a checkered employment history, had been able to roam top secret computers, stealing sensitive documents at will. President Obama was sort of famously low key. How does he express his anger? He wasn't a yeller or a screamer. And uh, in some ways that made it worse. We had profoundly uh, let him down. But a year later, Obama trusted Clapper with a secret mission to North Korea to bring home two Americans. Kenneth Bay and Matthew Miller, being held prisoner by North Korea. He accomplished the mission, although he had to sit through a lot of anti-American rhetoric. The thing that struck me was the pervasive sense of paranoia and the siege mentality that prevails in North Korea. What are they like to deal with, personally? The encounter I had with them was uh, pretty nasty. Did it get heated? Yes, it did. <laughs> Anybody have to step in and separate you? Well, at one point, my executive assistant suggested that uh, maybe it's time to go to the bathroom. And I uh, said, yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Thank you very much. Clapper was a generation older than the president, clinging to paper copies of intelligence reports, which Obama preferred to view on an iPad. I was the last of the Mohegans to give up a hard copy, I think. He leaves paper clips all over my office. <laughs> They're in the couch, they're on the floor, you know, he's shuffling paper, and so because I knew I was coming over here, uh, one of the things I did was return them all. As Obama's term in office came to an end, Clapper was confronted with a new threat unlike any he had seen before, Russia's meddling in the 2016 presidential election. I've seen a lot of bad stuff in intelligence in 50 years, but never anything like this, where there's a, such a, a broad-gauged attack against our, the fundamental underpinnings of our political system. One of Clapper's final acts as director of national intelligence was to issue an assessment that Vladimir Putin had ordered an influence campaign to help President-elect Trump's election chances by discrediting his opponent. Hillary Clinton. And you finally had to brief President-elect Trump on that. Right. How did that briefing go? We were, uh, you know, not sure whether we were going to get thrown out or, or not. And he, he wasn't that way at all. So he was cordial and affable and, uh, you know, listened. Then the infamous Steele dossier became public. 
the report by a former British intelligence officer turned private investigator alleging salacious activities by Donald Trump during the 2013 visit to Moscow. The president-elect accused the intelligence agencies of leaking it in an effort to discredit him. Disgraceful that the intelligence agencies allowed any information that turned out to be so false and fake out. I think it's a disgrace. And I say that, and I say that, and that's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. And I, I called him uh, about it, but I just couldn't let that pass. You were steamed. Well, I was. What did you say to him? What I tried to do was to uh, appeal to his sort of higher instincts by telling him that he was inheriting a national treasure in the form of the U.S. intelligence community, but he is more interested in my putting on a statement that uh, rebutted the uh, dossier, which I, I couldn't and wouldn't do. Clapper stepped down as director of national intelligence the moment Donald Trump <coughs> was sworn in as president. Congratulations, Mr. President. You have a pretty low opinion of President Trump. Respect for uh, the president's commander-in-chief is a big deal to me. This president makes that a challenge, i put it that way. Clapper is, as he wrote President Obama, a duty guy at heart. For most of his life, part of that duty was to avoid the press. But now it entails a new and very public relationship with the press. The strength of our country is, is enhanced by having a free, independent press. So, yes, I'm, I'm proud to be part of the fake news.